All right, so I've got the engine in. Uh, exhaust manifold's on. Turbo is going to be on soon. Um, clearly, you guys can see the tape that's there. <laughs> but this video is actually going to be about the transmission and what I've got going on in here. Um, it's a T56 Magnum, and I guess there's a lot of misinformation online about this, so I'll take the time to explain this. I think this is the best manual transmission for anyone wanting a 8,000 RPM redline right around there. Um, something that can handle a bunch of power, be very quiet, um, and handle a lot of abuse. So, a lot of you guys realize this car for me is grand touring. This is supposed to be luxury, comfort. Um, I want things to be operating in silence and, and very, very quiet operation. And so, the T56 Magnum, it has a, a triple synchro, very thick um, gear for, for as far as if you compare it to a factory Mazda uh, R box, the width of each gear is significantly wider, which means it can handle a lot more torque. And instead of going to something like a straight cut, uh, where you're going to get whine and noise, and uh, it's, it's obviously more efficient to do that, this is going to be a high point cut very effectively quiet transmission rated for 700 foot pounds of torque which I know they handle more but that's the rated probably for like 150,000 miles of abuse sort of number right in my setup we've got a FC front subframe and FC motor mounts and everything is very much in line in a factory positioning. The RX-7 has something like a three degree offset away from the driver. So the nose of the front of the motor is over here, roughly three degrees from a vehicle center line. So if we were to draw a center line through the vehicle, we're clearly offset. Yeah, you see that? So, this does a few things. The transmission is heavy. It's freaking heavy. And being that it's away from the driver this way, it really actually makes the, <laughs> the location of things very good. Um, I hope I didn't just lose the recording because someone's calling me. That would be insane. Uh, I hope I didn't lose you guys in that one. It's getting a phone call. Um, so anyways, we can see here, I'll zoom in for a second. There are zero clearance issues. How in the world, like I've got room for the vent. I've got room to hook the transmission if I need to in the back. I've got room back here. So... This configuration has a Bolo de Humo ball of fire um, bell housing adapter, which is this mid plate. It's like a one inch thick mid plate that attaches the FC Arc 7 bell housing while using the lever arm style slave cylinder. And that's going to push the clutch on the throwout bearing into the clutch using lever arm. You can see my spec twin disc Ooh. and flywheel. You can see the line here. All these lines are concentric to each other. This one comes up here to the clutch slave, or clutch master, excuse me. But you get the idea of this fits perfectly. Fits here perfectly. Fits here perfectly. And once I move this real quick. My 
shifter. The shifter lands perfectly into the center of the car. No cutting. Factory. <laughs> Could not be better, right? The only real drawback is on the fabrication side of things. If you are not comfortable with this, obviously find a fabricator, but you're going to have to do a little bit of work. So here we are, starter installed. Bolts up just like factory. Okay. This transmission uses a ATF. I suggest um, a Redline D4 to match the needs. And you can see I have a cross brace here tied into a reinforced uh, capped frame rail. So I took 083 wall and we capped the entire runner of the unibody so 083 wall is this thick okay it was cut it was matched to the body off of square tubing and I reinforced all the way in the frame rails for both sides and so when I did the transmission type stuff we integrated a through bolt here bolts here and another through bolt on this side which are all being used except for this outside part but so the transmission is integrated into that it's also into the factory location okay so the factory spot right here And then, of course, one benefit of this is you're getting a, a much stronger um, overall drive line. So this is my Mark Williams with uh, 1350 U-joints on it. Okay. But you guys can see in there, there is ample room for activities, right? Nothing had to be cut or bent or hammered or whatever and as we go through here you'll see all of this is incredibly reasonable for what we're trying to attain which again in my scenario is I want quiet but I want power and it's honestly kind of hard to get both Right. The older uh, approach would be to have like a straight cut gearbox. It would be to have um, a beefed up helical kit from something like um, OS Geiken, a great brand, but again, it's not really what you're aiming for. If you're trying to opt, I want this turbo to be at a freaking moon tune 35 pounds of boost through a semi pp uh bridgeport motor you know as much as you could build a factory transmission it would not handle it so oh. the idea would be to go to something bigger and so the options on the market right now are there are two DCT kits. There's this T56 Magnum, which by the way, this is only $3,500 brand new. That is dirt cheap. By the time you get this brand new, a clutch that's a twin disc that's like two grand, a drive shaft that cost me 850 bucks with U joints and high end uh, aluminum pieces here on the ends. I mean, realistically, this is a very cheap option for how much you're getting. It has zero miles on it. I mean, it has markings to show 
It's literally brand new from Tremec. So I, I can say nothing but good things about perfect fitment, having zero problems with clearance, fitting exactly in my shifter location. You know, it's a very good option for you guys. And getting back to the options, we have the Nissan CD009. And that has its, uh, what is it, I think it's JC or JK40C counterpart, whatever it is. But that thing is good for high RPM, good for mid power, um, but it's just not going to be fitting as well as this. It has a remote shifter location on the, the CD009, so you're getting a little bit of slop from like, instead of it being directly in, like this one, right, I have a direct shifter base that goes into the shifter. That one would have a remote linkage that goes to its piece, and then the bell housing itself is much larger. And so you end up having to cut that, and then you have to trim the tunnel or clearance the tunnel, and it makes it a lot more work. And then you've got stuff like the DCT kits, which are pretty cool if you want to have a automatic, but you know, you're adding another 80 some odd pounds on top of even the T56 Magnum, which is a lot of weight. I mean, I, for me, I would prefer the experience of a clutch on a car that I like to drive. If I wanted a car that was automatic, that shifted well, I'd get a new car like a Supra that actually has one <laughs> from factory. So I think it takes away the driving experience. And for me personally, I would say a better use for a home performance vehicle that I would want to use from the mountains and all sorts of uh, hood rat shit with my friends. I want something that is a manual um, transmission. So this, I believe, is the better option. It's definitely my favorite one. Um, the clutch options are pretty good now. They didn't used to be. So Spec made this one for me. McLeod will make one if you request it. X-Clutch will make theirs. Um, I think there's one from Clutch Masters, but honestly, I... I'm not a big fan of that brand at all. Uh, I've had some poor experiences with them. And uh, overall, I think that the options for us are expanding, not contracting. So it's a good opportunity to kind of jump on this now when things are still cheap. This transmission, again, is $3,500. Um, all things said and done. You're looking at a drive line of like under seven grand. If you completely screw it up, if your fabrication's a little pricey, whatever you're doing with that, it's still very reasonable. So, highly suggest it. And uh, yeah, there you go. T56 Magnum stuff. And for now, you guys can see the motor is dropped in. And I've got very high end pre wideband O2 sensors. Look at that. <laughs> nah. I will end on a good note. So, uh, all the fabrication stuff is done in this car, except for we're going to redo this front design here. And the powder coating stuff is all going to be coming back from powder coat tonight. So we've got the rest of the turbo, which I'll clean up, fully install. And, uh, a bunch of the small parts, the lower intake manifolds being uh, drilled out to have injector bung seats added into it. So once that's done, that'll ship back out to me. Um, and yeah, things are just, we're churning away here. So last night I did a bunch of small stuff like tidying up the um, hood pull, like simple stuff like this, you know. It does make a difference. It makes the car look a lot better. I did this 
this line here. And instead of having it do some like god awful bullshit around here, I ran it down and under. And it looks really good. I don't know. I just I hate seeing people. You know, some people wish to have good cars, and some people look like they built their cars off wish. And there's there's a, a really big disconnect in, in the industry, and the passion that goes into this stuff is not expensive. Like, this cost me 20 cents, you know. But if you take the effort, you can put something together that's beautiful, and you don't have to have excuses for why your car looks like ass. It takes, like, passion, effort, love. Make this stuff look like it's something that you want to show off. You know, you can have $50 oil coolers that you've, you know, had washed out and treated and painted and they look good. And you can have, like, small stuff like this that just comes together and looks right, so... Anyways, I guess it's my PSA to the community for now. But I uh, hope it helps with the transmission selection and inspiring you guys to build great shit and uh, keep on keeping on. I know things are not easy right now. So hang in there, y'all. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.